beautiful friends and welcome back to Cheap Lazy Vegan. Today I'm going to show you guys three awesome vegan recipes you can make using tofu. And I'm going to really show you guys how to incorporate tofu into your dishes and how to really use tofu as a replacement for meat and fish in many of your favorite recipes. In order to help me make my delicious tofu recipes, I am using the help of Hutch Kitchen who have very kindly provided me with some of their sexy kitchenware and who are also very kindly sponsoring this video. I'm using a lot of products from Hutch Kitchen throughout the video, so if you guys are interested in any of the products, they're actually giving you guys 10% off your order, so don't forget to check out their website and also use the code right here in order to get your 10% off. Before I get started with the recipes, I do want to quickly show you guys the star of the show, which is the ALP series from Hutch Kitchen. ALP stands for Advanced Layered Performance and this is basically a very unique technology and it's a hybrid blend of stainless steel and non-stick compound. So quickly, I would like to talk about the pros and cons of stainless steel versus non-stick. Stainless steel is really great for conducting and retaining heat which allows it to distribute the heat evenly and quickly and it also tends to last much longer than non-stick pans. However, it often requires a lot of oil in order to prevent your food from sticking. Whereas a non-stick pan can be great for reducing seeing the amount of oil in your diet because the food doesn't stick to the bottom. However, the bad thing about nonstick is that the nonstick compound can chip off and wear off over time and that can be really bad for your health. And you also can't use metal utensils and it really doesn't last as long as a stainless steel pan so you'll need to replace it more often. This is where the ALP series comes in! Woohoo! So as mentioned earlier, the ALP series is a hybrid of the great qualities of nonstick and the great qualities of stainless steel. So this beautiful design is not only pretty, but it also allows you to cook your food evenly and you can use metal utensils on here as well. It also lasts much longer than a nonstick pan and the beauty is that it requires very, very little oil like a nonstick pan. I'll be elaborating a little bit more on that later on in this video. But let's get started with the recipes. Throughout the video, I always started by prepping the tofu the same way, by freezing it. What I do is I take the extra firm tofu out of the original packaging, put the block into a Ziploc bag or container, and then just place it in the freezer until it is completely frozen. Usually I like to do this the day before I want to make some sort of tofu recipe. Then I take it out and I either thaw it naturally, if I have the time, or I just microwave it. I'm not sure what's better, but either way, I thaw it out. Then what happens is that you'll easily be able to squeeze out the excess water from the tofu and this is going to give the tofu a really nice meaty and chewy texture. Not only that, this will also allow your tofu to soak up flavors more easily. The first dish I'm going to show you guys is what I'm going to call a tofu fish steak with fresh salsa. This is super flavorful and delicious so I really hope you guys like it. Now that you've prepped your tofu by freezing it, thawing it, then squeezing out that excess water, we can now prepare our tofu fish steaks. You can choose to either cut your tofu with a knife into neat rectangles like so, or you could use my method which is to just rip it gently with your hands into these wide pieces. So I prefer this method because it makes it look more like a piece of fish or a piece of meat rather than a piece of tofu. And now we can just lay out those tofu pieces into a nice little container. And in a bowl, we're going to make our marinade. So we're going to add some garlic powder, kelp powder, some onion powder, ginger powder, oregano, and basil. Those are the spices, as you can see here. And we're also going to add in some soy sauce some lemon juice and i guess i forgot to film the rest of this part but i also added in some white vinegar mixed everything well together and poured that mixture into our tofu steaks so now we have created that marinade we're going to close that lid and set that aside for at least 30 minutes and while we are waiting for that tofu to soak up all of that marinade, we are going to create our fresh salsa. I believe this is also called pico de gallo, but what do I know? We are just chopping up some cilantro, some tomato, and some red onion. We're going to place that into a nice bowl. 
And then I'm going to press some garlic using Hutch Kitchen's award-winning garlic press. It's super cool. Just place your garlic in that basket. Squeeze. And then we're just going to pull that and go all the way around. And then that thing will release itself, whatever that is called. And then you can just scrape off the rest of that garlic. I'm also going to squeeze some fresh lemon juice into that salsa as well and add some salt. Mix everything together and there is your simple fresh salsa. And then at this point, you can prep whatever vegetables you want on the side of your tofu steaks. So I'm just prepping some green beans because they're yummy. And in order to cook everything, we are using the Alp series frying pan. I'm using the larger size. And before we start, we need to prep it to ensure that we've seasoned the pan before each use. We're going to add a little bit of oil into the surface and place the pan on medium to high heat. We're going to let the oil burn off, then wipe away the excess with a paper towel and that is going to ensure that you've locked in the oil and seasoned the stainless steel portion of the pan and then you can start cooking this part is completely optional but i'm adding some vegan butter into the pan simply for flavor purposes and i'm also adding some minced garlic and now we can throw in our green beans we're gonna cook the green beans for a little bit first because they seem to take forever to cook i don't know why but they take a long time to cook so we're gonna cook it maybe at about a medium heat for a little bit before we add in the tofu steaks and of course, we're going to add in a little bit more vegan butter, again, just for flavor purposes, a little bit more garlic, because garlic is life. And we're going to add in our marinated tofu steaks. I cooked them at medium high heat for about four to five minutes on each side. So I like to cook the tofu pieces until they've nicely browned on the outside. So just be patient and just wait until they've nicely browned. And here we have it. We've just placed it onto a plate. And doesn't that kind of look like fish? <laughs> I don't know. And honestly, the tofu already had so much flavor, so you could just eat it like that. But it was so, so good with the salsa, which I'm adding right now. Uh, the salsa just created such a nice balance, such fresh taste, and it was so, so good. I highly recommend trying this. This would be a really, really great thing to serve at a nice dinner party. Doesn't that look fancy? I know, guys. I'm so fancy. <laughs> okay. Next dish is going to be a very simple and very easy teriyaki tofu udon stir fry. It's super easy, super simple, and very delicious. Once again, I've prepared the tofu by freezing it, thawing it, and squeezing out that excess water. And now I'm just going to simply rip our tofu into bite-sized pieces. This time I'm trying to make it look more like chicken and less like tofu. I'm placing the pieces into this beautiful collapsible mixing bowl by Hutch Kitchen, which is super cool because you can actually expand it into a bowl when you need to use it and then fold it into a much smaller size for easier storage. So it's great for anyone that wants to save some space in their kitchen and now i'm just gonna put on my lazy chef hat and just pour in some store-bought teriyaki marinade into the tofu pieces mixing that well set that aside and we're gonna cut up our vegetables i'm just using some broccoli some cauliflower onions of course and we're also gonna press some more garlic with that hutch kitchen garlic press and now we're gonna head on over to the stove and use our beautiful hutch kitchen alp series wok and of course we're gonna prep it the exact same way that we prepped our alp series frying pan into the wok we're gonna add in our onion and our garlic first and we're gonna saute that for a couple of minutes then I threw in the tofu pieces and let it cook for a little bit before throwing in the rest of the vegetables. And then we're going to add in the broccoli and cauliflower and then just cook it for a little bit. I covered it up just to let the broccoli and cauliflower soften a little bit. I also decided to add in some oyster mushrooms, which I am obsessed with. They are so delicious. And I'm also going to throw in some prepared udon noodles. I just simply cook them according to the instructions on the packaging and then just threw them into the stir fry. We're going to mix everything together and I decided to add in a little bit more of that teriyaki sauce and just mix it well. Then I simply plated it, added a few chili flakes on top, and here we have our teriyaki tofu udon stir fry. Doesn't the tofu kind of look like chicken? This is a great way to replace the chicken in this type of dish. 
Last but definitely not least, we are going to be making one of my favorite dishes from my childhood. This is a Korean dish and it is called takdori tang. I don't know how to translate it, but it's essentially a spicy chicken stew. It is super delicious. My parents used to make this all the time when I was a child. Obviously, I don't eat chicken anymore, but I've actually made this in a previous meal prep video, but I didn't add any tofu or anything to replace the chicken part. So I thought, hey, I'm gonna try to make this in the most similar way possible, but by adding tofu instead of the chicken. So I really hope you guys try this out. It's so good. It tastes like my childhood. Now let's get started. First thing I'm going to do is prep the vegetables by chopping them into nice bite-sized pieces. We are using potatoes, broccoli, carrots, and of course, onions. This time, I'm going to be using the Alp Series Pot by Hutch Kitchen, which is really great for any stew style or curry recipes. I'm going to start by sauteing the onions first and then add in the rest of the vegetables after a little bit. And then we're just going to add about a cup of water and then we're just going to cover it up with a lid and let it cook at about a medium high heat while we prepare the sauce. Now we're going to prepare the sauce. We're going to press some garlic into a bowl and then we're going to add our magic ingredient which is gochujang aka Korean red pepper paste which you can easily find in Korean supermarkets. We're also adding a little bit of gochugaru which is basically the powder form of gochujang. You can also find that in Korean supermarkets or you can just add extra gochujang if you don't have gochugaru. And then we're also going to add a bit of sugar, some soy sauce, and a little bit of sesame oil. Now you'll find that I adjusted the seasonings quite a bit throughout this recipe and in this video. I'll explain later, okay. We're gonna add a little bit of water to thin out this mixture. Mix it very well together, guys. Then we are going to just pour that mixture into our pot. And we're gonna add another cup of water and just mix everything well together. We're gonna take our prepped tofu. We are going to just simply rip them into small bite-sized pieces like we did before, and then just throw them into this pot. Then we just wanna make sure we mix everything very well together, make sure that tofu is nicely swimming inside that broth. And then we're going to cover that lid up. And the heat is probably at about a medium low heat at this point. And this part is totally optional, but we're gonna add some glass noodles into this dish as well. This is a very common practice. My parents used to do it a lot, and I really like glass noodles. So we're gonna add that in. So first, I'm gonna prep the noodles, and I didn't really follow instructions very well, but I'm just basically soaking the noodles in some warm water first to soften them up a bit. And now, the problem and the mistake that I made is that I am using way too many noodles, guys. Those noodles expand like crazy, so do not use as much as I just did, okay? just. Maybe use a little bit because it's going to expand. You know what I'm saying? I'm super ambitious. So I'm just trying to just throw in all of those noodles and FYI, it's about to expand like twice the size. So yay. <laughs> What's gonna happen now is because I added way too many noodles, the noodles are going to soak up all of that liquid and all of that sauce. So I need to definitely add more liquid, some more water and more of that sauce, which is why I ended up making probably about twice the amount of sauce. So I had to keep adjusting it tasting it as I went so yeah I just added a lot more water probably about one to two more cups of water and about double the amount of sauce but again adjust according to your own taste buds if you don't like spicy too much then don't add as much spicy and if you want it more salty add more soy sauce if you want it more sweet add more sugar you know how all of that works once everything is pretty much done cooking, you can add in some green onions if you'd like, and then it's pretty much ready to serve. Just a note, I really like to let this cook for a long time on low heat so that the flavors get to make love and come together. But if you do that, I do recommend adding the noodles at the very end when everything has already pretty much cooked for a long time because the noodles will become quite soggy if you cook them for too long. I learned this the hard way but I actually don't mind soggy glass noodles because I used to eat this dish as a leftover the day after because this is another one of those things that tastes better the next day you could also add in ramen noodles instead of glass noodles which is also really good 
or just don't add noodles at all which is totally fine as well and now that you are done this dish you can actually serve this with rice which is my favorite way to eat it and i really hope you guys try this out because it really really tastes like my childhood all right, you guys, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed these recipes. If you guys want more tofu recipes or ideas on how to cook tofu, definitely check out my video on tofu. I made a very extensive video about tofu. So if you guys are tofu noobs, you have no idea what to do with tofu, definitely check that video out. I'll link that down below. And of course, I would like to thank Hutch Kitchen for very kindly sponsoring this video and providing me with some very, very sexy kitchenware and their beautiful Alp series. Once again, the Alp series is super versatile and allows you to sear, brown, and saute all in one pan. And this is definitely my new favorite go to pan. So don't forget to check out the link down below and use the code CheapLazyVegan to get yourself 10% off your purchase. If you guys are new to this channel, don't forget to click that subscribe button. And of course, if you enjoyed this video, click that like button, and I will see you guys in my next video. Thank you guys for watching. Bye bye.